Welcome back. So, the XR5 is cool on its own, but I wanted to make it look like it had just been pulled off of a battlefield from Ghost in the Shell. My goal was not only to make it look cool, but also make the various vents and ports look like they served an actual purpose to the system that a real XR5 would use to fire. Luckily, my friend Kevin and I had been working on props for several years, so I knew where to start. I didn't record myself painting the gun, so I'm simulating the various effects I used on a broken magazine. Because my XR5 is primarily white, I focused on finding solid secondary colors to make it pop. I got a blaze orange to match highlights to the tip of the gun, a subdued periwinkle for the stripes, and some flat white to match small pieces to the main body. You'll notice the upper receiver is covered in a grayish black grime. I did this to bring down the clean white color to make it look dirty and used. To accomplish this, I used a black wash. Mix some black temper paint with some water, then dab it onto a paper towel. Use a little extra paint to darken the wash if it's too light, then dab it onto the surface. Then, use a dry paper towel to remove and smear the paint. Leaving it on certain sections for longer will give you darker stains. To simulate burns along the heat vent, I painted over it with black paint, making sure to coat the inside as well, so that the white wouldn't show through from within. To give it the smoked, uneven effect, I let it sit for about a minute before lightly scraping it with a paper towel. After doing this around three times, I was left with the final product. I also used this method on the flash hider and the small circular markings to make them look grimy. You may also notice that the stripes aren't pristine around the edges. To get this look, I simply taped off my stripes, painted them, and then scraped them with my fingernail while the paint was still drying. I found that this method works best on hard edges and corners as it's supposed to simulate wear on points of contact. Speaking of points of contact, finer wear marks on the cheek rest and around the bolts can be made using a low grit sandpaper. you'll want to be sure to apply the wash to your stripes as this will help them blend with the rest of the gun. At this point the gun looked cool but the lower receiver looked too clean. Because it's black, I couldn't use the same black wash method that I did on top. You can see here, I simulated light colored dirt. The lighter color contrasts the black plastic and matches the weathering on the upper receiver. To stay consistent, I added a little dirt coloring to the upper receiver as well. To accomplish this, Kevin helped me apply what's called a dry brush. You can take a small amount of tempered or acrylic based paint on a brush and lightly dust your object. The small particles of paint are blotchy and irregular, so they simulate dirt and mud very well. While dry brushing, we made sure to focus on edges, textured parts, and crevices where dirt would usually collect. Then we washed off most of it, leaving behind smears and some light highlights. I also wanted some random alien language on the side because it looked too plain. To do this, I printed off some symbols that Kevin designed, cut them out with an X-Acto knife, 
and then use the glue stick to stick them on like a sticker. I taped some paper towels on to avoid overspraying my gun. After using the weathering technique I used on the stripes and applying a little more black wash, I was left with some pretty nice alien markings that mean absolutely nothing. After all of this, we're left with a fully functional XR5 that looks like a real energy weapon. The heat vent looks scorched and the ejection port looks like it drops superheated casings. Even the sights have been given a dual tone paint job with some orange highlights. The orange highlights match the tip so there's no need to remove it. And this makes it so that all the parts of the gun are the same cohesive color scheme. It gets a lot of attention on the field and manages to make white look good. If you'd like to do something similar to your gun but don't want it to be white, look for some good contrasting colors to make the base color of your gun's body pop. Light brown and gray work well for darker colors, and a white dry brush can even simulate snow and ice. The possibilities are endless. Remember, disassembling your gun and using tape should be a priority if you want your lines to be clean. That's the first step in completing a really nice do-it-yourself paint job. I've still got some big external upgrades planned for this gun. Now that I've finished with the symbols on the side of the receiver, I've started trying to make the heat vent glow orange with some automotive LED strips. I'll be sure to provide a tutorial in the near future. Thanks for watching. I'd like to give a shout out to a friend of mine, Burnt Wolf Airsoft. He makes some awesome airsoft how-to videos and approaches the sport from a ton of different angles I've never even thought of. His channel is worth a visit. I'll link him down in the description and at the end of the video. Additionally, thank you for 900 subscribers. It's crazy how fast Corporate Approved is growing, and it's all thanks to you. I've got some cool ideas for a 1K Q&A, so leave some questions in the comments if you want. Also, shoot me your thoughts for other sci-fi builds like the XR5 and the Riot Shield, because I'd like to see what you're thinking.